Amen and good morning. Turning your Bibles to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Go almost to the end of the New Testament. If you get to Revelations, you've gone too far. Start backing up, okay? You find Hebrews chapter 10. It's right after you got Titus, Philemon, then you get Hebrews. And Titus and Philemon are probably only one or two pages in your Bible, okay? Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to, normally I'll lead in, but today we're going to read the scripture and then we'll, we'll move forward. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is, his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, and with a full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one, one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another. And all the more. As you see the day approaching. There's a couple of things in, I, I, in there about drawing to God and about worshiping together. Okay? And that'll be the focus of where we go this morning. But I want to see if I can relate to it. And um, Kay goes through, this, goes through the world and she likes to have background noise on. The television is on at our house all the time, isn't it, Hannah? Okay, no matter, there's always something in the background. At our house, Big Bang Theory is, I think it's your fallback show, if all else fails, Big Bang Theory. So I, I looked up and I saw one of my, probably my favorite episode come on. And it's the first time that Sheldon and Amy Farrah Fowler meet Shamie is born. If you watch the show, you now know they are married, okay? The Sheldon is, if you don't watch the show, is uber smart, egocentric, narcissistic. I tell Hannah, do not ever bring Sheldon home, okay? Because I'm just going to shoot him, all right? The, all right, and he's forced, his friends trick him into... Going on a date, they put all this stuff into the a dating site, and up pops Amy Farrah Fowler. As he says, he thinks dating sites are hokum. He says this just can't be. And so there, all of a sudden, is Amy Farrah Fowler, and he says, "I'm sorry." He apologizes for her that right after she introduces himself. He goes, "I'm sorry that you've been tricked. I'm being held hostage by my friends in dirty hosiery. They're holding us." sock over him they've told him they've hidden it she says that's okay I have an agreement with my mother that I will date at least once a year he quickly responds that's interesting I have the same agreement with going to church with my mom who lives in East Texas and she looks at him and I think this statement says a lot about how we sometimes approach attending church she says, I don't have a problem with there being a deity, just one that takes attendance. And I think more often than not, we go, I'm with Amy Fairfair. Why do I have to attend church? I can worship as I did yesterday, hanging off the side of a tree. Or on the golf course, or my wife would say sitting with her, her feet in the sand at the beach. Some of you may say riding the pontoon up and down the lake. 
wherever, right? Anybody want to bob their head up and down? Yeah. But see, we think that God is asking us to attend church for his benefit. And it's not for his benefit. It's for ours. God is asking us to be a part, to be present in the house of worship with a community of believers, not for him, but for us. God doesn't have to draw near. We say God never leaves you, never forsakes you. He's always there. He's always present. Even in the middle of the storm when we say we see only one set of footprints in the sand. And then it's only later do we realize that he's carrying us, right? God doesn't need to draw near. It's you and I who turn and walk away and say, ha, I'm all good. It's the very thing that the writer of Hebrews said. I don't remember the verse. He says, but let us draw near to God. He didn't say, let God draw near to you. See, your presence is about you drawing near. About you feeling God's presence. There's something about walking into God's house. Sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes your wife, your parent, your husband may have asked you to. Or made you to in my, as it goes in my house. So when I was a child, and as my children were children. Right, Anna? <laughs> it's not really much of an option when your dad's a pastor. Okay? But as a child, I was drugged to church all the time. It wasn't an option. But there's something about coming with, to church with people who are desiring to be in the presence of God. I don't know if y'all could hear me on the third song. Probably, hopefully you couldn't. But I sat up here with my eyes closed during the third song, and I was, and I was belting it out. The band may have been deafened by my tone deaf singing. But there was something about being here because I could hear them and I could hear you. And there's something about when we come into his presence, about being drawn to him. People tell me they can worship all over the place, and I can tell you, yes. But there is something about being in a body, about being together that matters, and being drawn into his presence. And it can happen here. It's part of how we were made. When we take our, when people join the Methodist church, we ask them about their presence. Will you be here and be present? And there are times, I will tell you, I've seen folks that they're sitting here, there, or it doesn't matter where. And somehow their body's here, but there's nothing between here and here that is in the room. There's something about being in church with a group of people. That it can help you draw near to God. So one of the, that connection, God isn't asking us to call, roll, or take attendance for his good. It's for your good and our good. Because when we don't draw near, something happens. It took me a long time to learn this in college. I, I did this, and I don't know why. I did really good in, up through high school in attending class or going to school. There's this long stretch from middle school to high school where I don't miss days until my senior year where I decided I would I miss some days. <laughs> it was odd. I actually told my mom when I was going to cut. I didn't. All my buddies were nervous. I cut and just had fun. My mom was a teacher. She didn't want the phone call, okay? And so she told me, she goes, I know y'all are going to cut. I know you and your friends. Just call. So that's what we did. Or that's what I did. My buddies weren't that smart. Uh, so in college, yeah. Hannah, close your ears right now. I might have missed a few classes those first few years, right? I might have not gotten up. I might have destroyed a clock or two because I didn't like alarms. You know, my grades my first two years in college showed that I didn't attend class. It's amazing when I moved back home and I started attending class all the time. 
that how much I could get in by just being in class, even when I didn't want to be. There's something about coming to church, being present, that you might draw near to Him, even when you don't want to be here. Or even when you're not sure why. But as a Christ follower, that being drawn to Him is part of your connection through your presence. Anybody notice the temperature changed? Yeah. I actually needed a jacket in the deer stand uh, Friday and Saturday. It was marvelous. The thing that it made me think about was that there was about to be, there's going to be a backyard. Anybody going to light the fire pit? It's an excuse for me, okay? But next time you, you light the fire pit at the house or somebody invites you over and says, I want you to take a look and as those coals burn and you sit and stare aimlessly into the flames. Sooner or later, a piece will fall off of one of those coals, right? And if you slide it over out to the side by itself, do you know what will happen? It's going to go out, isn't it? It will become cold and black. And silent. When we don't allow ourselves to draw into his presence, we are nothing but a piece of coal that has been lit and then moved off to the side. The most interesting thing, though, is what happens if I slide it back into the fire? How fast will it catch fire? Quickly. And it will be made new. It will be part of the body, right? See, when all of a sudden we struggle, and I'll tell you, most Sundays, I, I've already this morning, I was like, okay, I need to check on this person and this person. It's amazing how fast it can happen that we all of a sudden, nobody takes notice, and we're outside. And we start to slip away. We start to go cold and to go out. See, there's something about your need to be present in a body of worship that will draw you near to God. Those other people who are excited, next week we're probably going to, pretty sure we're going to have some pictures from the mission trip. It won't be really, be hard to miss that we're excited about it, about the stories that we have. See, those things tend to encourage us. When people are excited about being at church, and are being in the house and being drawn to God. So your presence is important. The, um, the other thing is, and if you look at the bottom of this verse, or the bottom two verses of this, if my glasses will work. We could have preached this, by the way, off of these, but I felt like the first part, us being drawn to God, impacted verses 24 and 25 said, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Encouraging. We talked a little bit about that last week. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. All the more as you may see the day or his return approaching. So the other thing is that we were meant to be a body of believers. We all have different parts and roles that we play many of you know if you took these two things away from me you would wonder if my tongue could talk right if it would work but the reality is when we look over in ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 16 i think it's in your bulletin it talks about that we all play a different part in a different role because, see, some of you are eyes. Some of you are hands. Some of you are a mouth. Some of you are feet. And the reality is that we all play a different part in a different role. I, part of my gifting and stuff is to talk and to teach. But for that may only reach so many people. A hundred. But when all of a sudden the hands and the feet of 
start working and walking and talking and touching the lives, it reaches a thousand and two thousand. And while all the marvelous words in the world can do, but all of a sudden the hands start to work. And you say, but John, I, I'm not sure I'm any of that. But you may be the eye that sees the need because that's where it starts. Somebody else may be the one that encourages, we go back to the Hebrews passage, that says, we ought to go there. Hey, and they find the people that can go and do the task or the ministry. They might actually look like feet, y'all. They carry us to the point of where we need to go. But if they aren't present, we're stuck. The eye sees it and is saying, hey, we need to go here. And there's no feet to carry us. There's nobody to stand up and cheer. There's no hand to go and serve. You can have the eye, the feet, the mouth, but if you don't have the servants who go and minister out of their own love and grace, out of the skills they have, then we just get there and we're like, hey, y'all. Hmm. See, the other thing is that when we come together, we are one body. We all have different parts and different roles to play. Verse 12 or 13, Paul writes, he said, Some I gave to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be teachers. I'm missing one, shepherds along the way. And then there's many more gifts out of that when we go over and read Fruits of the Spirit. But we all play different parts and different roles. And if we aren't present, the body is incomplete. Our human body is amazing. I'm trying to wonder what else they can take away from Kay and her keep functioning. You've had all sorts of parts removed. <laughs> okay, but you know what? The church body, we were made to have our parts. We were made to have somebody who can sing, who can play the drums and the guitars. We're made to have somebody who can go and lead and take care of our technical stuff. We were meant to be somebody who goes and serves to show love. And you know what? If we're missing the part, it doesn't happen. Any of y'all played sports? You know, you, what do you have? We always say, know your role. My son's greatest fear was that I was going to look at him and go, go play goalie. We don't have one. And as a coach, I did that to him a few times. And he has hands of stone. He hated it because part of us was missing. And we figured out we had to play the game. The reality is we play a game and we, we live our life out in our roles every day as a part of the church. And it starts by us being present in worship because from, it is from here that we go out. The end is not just everybody come here. It is from here we go out. But if we don't have the, the bits and the pieces to come together, we can't go out right. I would encourage you to look around. Who is it that's missing this week? Who is it that you haven't seen lately? It says in 11, he says, spur on, encourage, out of Hebrews right there in 24 and 25. And part of that is by checking on people. Hey, I just missed you lately. Or maybe you want to call, like, calling and checking on Tim when he was having back surgery. How are you? It was good to, and it is good to see him up and about, praising the Lord because it's going well. But that's part of who we are. See, our connection, our, our presence in worship leads to our connection both to God and to others and improving it. So next time when you come to a Sunday and you're like, I just don't know. I want to worship at order rest. I've been there. God says, bring your presence. Come into my house. Draw near to me. And near to those who love me. 
because it will draw you both to God and to other Christ followers. There's something about that that is captivating that should draw us. And because when that happens, the most interesting thing in the world is it tends to draw others because they see people who are, as we might say, on fire. How do you need to be present? Who is it you need to encourage to be present? So that the whole body can be complete and draw near to God. I'm going to pray for you and then we'll receive our tithes and offerings this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for being in your house. Lord, I thank you that we can come and draw near to a holy God. Because Lord, I don't wonder whether you love us. You showed us that. God, encourage us to be present. And Lord, when we do, may we draw near to a holy God who loves us. And may we go out into this world and serve out of our overabundance of what you have loved and poured into us. Father, we thank you and we praise you because you are our Lord and Savior. Amen.